Today I'm going to show you how to make grapefruit soda using flavor development techniques, so that means essential oils, because this turns out fantastic and it's not that hard to make and it really produces a good product. Now, if you're looking for fresh fruit versions, I can highly recommend Jean Felix over at Truffle on the Rocks and or Kevin over at Cocktail Time. They do some excellent uh, fresh fruit versions of this. But this is more a flavor development channel, so we're going to go in that direction in this video. Now, it's not hard to do. Uh, it is going to use the emulsification method we did previously for the Crystal Cola or Crystal Pepsi version. And I've done a little experimenting, so a lot of actually experimenting, and I've broken a lot of emulsions. But I have found that a one-to-one -one emulsion of grapefruit oil and polysorbate 60 works out really well. And you get a nice stable emulsion, so that's what we're going to be using today. And a lot of people have a question as to whether you can make a grapefruit flavor using that uh, doesn't interfere with medications. And... It's not in this video, but I think we can do it based on all the work I've done here. I've made about eight or nine different versions of this, testing out different flavor compounds. And I think we can work around the actual compounds in the grapefruit oil uh, that cause problems. So if you're interested in that, please post that below. But otherwise, today's video is using grapefruit essential oil, which you, know, you shouldn't take if you're on certain medications. So we're going to use the one-to-one, -one, and it's really simple. You're just going to take some simple syrup. Now, this is just one-to-one -one simple syrup. So basically 650 grams of sugar, and then I just add hot water to dissolve the sugar. And I leave about 100 mils at the top because we're going to be adding some stuff. So the first thing we need to do is measure out 11 grams of this emulsion. So it will produce roughly... 100 parts per million of flavor in the finished beverage. And it's really easy to do. You just weigh it out. Now, I do tend to go over by about a quarter of a gram, so 0.25. And the reason I do that is there's always some going to stick to the side. Now, you want good vortexing going on this because you want the emulsion to get distributed really quickly. There's always a few drops left over. And when you're talking about grapefruit oil, this is at 100 parts per million in the finished beverage. You can actually double that amount. The, the, they recommend up to 240 parts per million. Though this actually gives a good flavor with the stuff we're going to be using. So just get that stirring. And this is a version I made with just the emulsion and acid sugar. And it actually came out great. It's a little light in flavor, so we're gonna do a couple other things here to kind of help this emulsion along. Now I'm just gonna turn that down for noise purposes. But one of the most important ingredients for that true grapefruit flavor is grapefruit mercaptan. And this is a sulfur compound, and it's a compound we can smell in parts per trillion. And that's kind of what we use it at, is kind of like 100, 100 parts per trillion. So, when you buy a bottle of this, this is a 15 mil bottle or 12 gram bottle, uh, you can make a million liters with this. And that's not a joke, that's how little we use. And this is a 1% solution already. So I take one gram of this and dilute it in alcohol up to 250 grams. And what happens is, at that level, uh, it smells like burnt tires. So the car took off and squealed his wheels. Uh, that's what this kind of smells like. But when we use one drop to three drops, maybe five drops in this, it brings out that true grapefruit flavor. You do not want to overdo this. It just will dominate and create that sulfury aroma. But this is the core flavor of what makes grapefruit grapefruit. So I'm just going to add three drops. And that's it. Again, this will make tens of thousands of liters, and for $60 US, this will make a million liters. So a lifetime plus supply of grapefruit mercaptan, but the cost when you're making that volume is very small. This is why soda is actually kind of cheap to make, is because you're using such tiny amounts, like literally parts per trillion on this. 
And we are aiming for below one part per billion of this. And that's what a few drops diluted will do. I'll post more of that information over on Patreon because I know Greg at How to Drink is working on a grapefruit beverage. He's been working on it for a bit. And this is probably the ingredient that he's missing. So Greg, I'll uh, send you a note. Most of the other information will be on Patreon. I'll put all the other little details. But there you would have a even better grapefruit syrup at this level. Now, the one thing that is often found in a lot of grapefruit flavors is a little bit of fruitiness. Now this is ethyl butyrate. Uh, I've used it in pineapple flavors and a bunch of others. And yes, it can be used to create a pineapple flavor. But the reality is, is a lot of esters just create a fruitiness. So we're gonna add like three or four drops, maybe five. And uh, that's just gonna bring out the fruitiness in this and give it a little more depth of flavor. And it's a really easy way to add, kind of, you know, round out that flavor. And then the final ingredient, you know, fine, it's not really mandatory, you can develop this any way you want, is a product called Nucatone. And it is found in grapefruits naturally, it's found in the peel. It does have a distinct grapefruit flavor. It comes as a powder. So you're just gonna add, you know, 100 milligrams, maybe 200 milligrams to your mixture here. And that's gonna help round out the flavor. So that's 190 milligrams there. Uh, it is not a lot, a little bit goes a long way. And again, we'll get the stirring. And you want it vortexing so that when this goes in, it will actually get pulled to the bottom and broken up. And that is a good starting point for your grapefruit soda. And again, as I mentioned, this is gonna make roughly eight liters and it all depends on how much syrup you use per drink. So if you're doing the old soda fountain standard of one ounce in an eight ounce drink, you're gonna get roughly eight liters out of this. If you do two ounces in 355, which is what a can would be, you're gonna get a little less. And if you do 25 mils in a 250 mil drink, you're gonna get closer to 10 liters. So uh, for everything in this video, everything is kind of at the intermediate point. So you can add more or add less but this is kind of right in the middle, kind of down Main Street uh, type flavor. So feel free to adjust. So you could technically double your emulsion. Wherever my emulsion went, there it is. So you could double this because it's gonna put in roughly 100 parts per million. But again, as mentioned earlier on, you could do up to 240 parts per million. So you double amount, the amount of grapefruit oil, but that becomes quite flavorful. And it can, when you put too much flavor in, you get that chemically, you know, people call it chemically flavor. And, or, and it's, that's usually a sign you've used too much flavor. So back it off, try this one out and then see how it works. Now you can add other things. So you can use different esters, you can use, use different flavor compounds. This is called guavanate. It does find, it smells like guava, uh, but it does find its way into some grapefruit flavors. So I'm just gonna add two drops. And just to round out the flavor, I've been experimenting with a whole bunch of these, so you can do a lot of different things. And if you want, you can add these aldehydes, so octanal and decanal, they're actually naturally found in orange and grapefruit peel. And so they do add a lot of that kind of element. If you're inclined, you can add a few drops of these as well. And again, all of this, stuff can be done in drops in this, and then you can adjust, and then if you're going to make a product or serve this at your bar, just document what you do, and then that way you will uh, be able to reproduce it. Now, the last thing while this is spinning is citric acid. And this is 40 grams of citric acid. Grapefruits can have up to 2% acid. So for this amount of beverage, that would mean 160 grams of citric acid. 
that's a little bit too much. That really creates a lot of pucker. And even 40 grams is a lot of acid, but it comes out to about 0.5%. And with the sweetness, it's fairly well balanced. And based on taste tests I've done with family members, they don't mind this at all. And so you can work with that. Now, we could probably reduce the acid and reduce the sugar and keep the flavor fairly contained. The problem with that is that you're gonna end up with something that is not shelf stable. So if you go through eight liters of this in a week or a week and a half and you keep it in the fridge, you're gonna be fine. But if this is gonna be sitting around, especially at room temperature, and you're using less sugar, it is liable to ferment. So now with the acid, I added water just to pre-dilute this or pre-dissolve it a little bit. Uh, if you just dump the acid in, it takes a while to get going. The nice thing about citric acid is that you can actually dissolve equal amounts of citric acid in an equal amount of water, just like simple syrup. And you can also add sodium citrate to this to bring up the pH while keeping your acidity high. And that will help balance the flavor. So if you find this too sharp, uh, check out the video on acids. And I talk a little bit about sodium citrate and how that can buffer things and bring the pH up and that will help kind of create a better flavor if you find it too puckery. Now you can add malic acid, that's naturally found. You can use any acid you want, but this generally works well with citric. And I'm just gonna turn this back on, get it vortexing, and then we'll just dump this in. You let that stir for five minutes, however long it gets to dissolving. It should dissolve pretty quickly. Then you're done your syrup, and that is literally it. There are other things you can add. So you can do a zero calorie version of this using the zero calorie simple syrup I've made. Uh, you can add naringen, which is a citrus bioflavonoid. People buy this as a supplement. I just buy the supplement powder to put in this. The only problem is, is, and it's not a problem, but you're gonna end up with something a little bit hazier. It does take a while to dissolve, and you're gonna add you know, 300 milligrams to a liter of syrup. Uh, it's typically used at 10 to 20 milligrams in a beverage, but people take 500 milligrams of this as a health supplement. So there is room to work. It is a bitter flavor, so when you stick your finger in and taste it, it does come across as bitter. Uh, that does help balance all the flavors. So if you're inclined to do that, uh, go ahead. It does work well. Uh, I do have it in this one, which is the beverage I made at the beginning. It does create just a slight haze, but uh, most people wouldn't really notice that. And it's going to be one of those things that there's so much room to play with. This is the fun part about flavor development. You can do so much with it. If you wanted to, if you're making Palomas, you could add lime or key lime, uh, depending on multiple different types of lime that you can add to the emulsion and so that your Palomas will have that lime flavor built in. Uh, it's kind of what beverages like this would do, but we can do better than this. Uh, ting is a good flavor, but it's very sweet compared to this one. This one comes across as acidic. So if you like daiquiris and you want your Paloma more like a daiquiri, uh, this is the syrup to use. It's really going to give you that bright flavor and then mix it with tequila, some lime. Uh, then you really have this good flavor. And again, you can just keep mixing and messing around with all of this however you want. And it creates some really good beverages. So I've done, I think, six or eight versions of this, and all of them are good, but this version is probably the best. I may add some naringen to it just to help give it some bitterness and balancing it out. And this will clear up. This is actually just air entrainment at the moment. So little bubbles are floating to the top. It will come out perfectly clear like this one. And this one's a good simple one, but again, Develop as you see fit. This channel is about flavor development. I'll put a lot more information over on Patreon just because this is a better documentation method. And, you know, give it a shot and let me know how it turns out if you do make it. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.